Interestingly, I'm passionate about controlling invasive plants, killing invasive plants because I love plants. I'm a botanist and I'm really passionate about native plants. Oh, look, this is a, oh, this is nice. This is what we like to see. The non-native invasives that we are controlling are incredibly good at being plants. They grow quickly, they reproduce aggressively, they can occupy a lot of different habitat types. So I, I want to be careful not to call them bad plants. They are plants out of place that do a lot of harm to ecosystems. My name's Amanda Devine. We're on Little Whaleboat Island in Harpswell, Maine. The native plants are plants that the wildlife, the insects and the birds and the other animals in this ecosystem have co-evolved with. The interrelatedness is important. And natural communities are in flux, just like species are always evolving. But the rate that the non-native invasives that we are concerned with, the rate that they have moved into new landscapes is so fast that the other species that are here haven't had time to evolve. They haven't had time to co-evolve with them. So the thi oh, oh, look there. I was just about to say, where you find one, yeah. you know there's others, it's lurking. We got a GPS, good, I'm gonna mark this. Mark, okay. That might take a little bit of clipping and dripping. It's always a good idea to stick a pin flag or hang some flagging tape in the ground so you know where you have treated before. This is what we like to see. You know why I like to see this? One big vine. I don't want to pull it. You know why? Because if there's any little shreds of roots left in the soil, it's going to re-sprout. I don't want to disturb the soil either. This is one of the reasons why I do advocate for the use of small amounts of herbicide is we want to minimize soil disturbance. Soil disturbance is big picture, one of the primary reasons why we have these species here on the landscape. If I rip this thing out of the ground and there's seeds from bittersweet or God knows what else in here, it's going to be a perfect storm of regeneration. So that looks good to me. There's no seeds on here. Now something you do need to be careful with is if this plant was full of seeds and I grabbed it and I dragged it over to the beach to throw it out, put it in a contractor bag and throw it out. I'm gonna spread those damn seeds everywhere. So if you've got material with seeds on it, just drop it, let it be, it'll die on its own. Some people are upset that I use herbicide and, and I can understand that. I'm not gonna argue with anybody. I personally don't feel that I'm at risk or that I'm putting the environment at risk with the types of herbicides that I use or the ways that I use them in. Our target pest was bittersweet. And wind speed is picking up. It's probably 15 to 20 right now, but we were in the lee. So 10 ounces total of chemical in two and a half hours of scalpel-like treatment. I feel pretty good about that. So I, I stand by my choice to use herbicides. The way that I do it, I think, poses a minimum of disruption. And maybe when they see the ways that I use herbicide, they won't feel quite so threatened by it. We're not talking about foliar spraying out of airplanes here. Um, I'm not coming in crop dusting. Oh, I'm using a 32 ounce hand sprayer and a pair of pruning shears. This is usually when the ground hornets all come flying out. The sense of urgency here on this particular property is high because this is what I would call a winnable battle. If you take a 10 acre thicket where bittersweet has been well established for 40 years, I would argue that it's a waste of resources to go in. And by that time you're going in with heavy equipment, you're going in with lots and lots of chemicals, and you're gonna be essentially replanting and starting from scratch. Now there's value to that, absolutely. But here, here we just have a little bit of bittersweet. Let's see how far this goes. I bet that's one year's worth of growth right there. Even though there's not much out here, because there's not that much out here, it becomes especially urgent. Because what I don't want is for this island, which has a really nice, relatively intact forest, there's a lot of wonderful native plants out here and a fair amount of species diversity. What I don't want is for this island to become that next 40 acre thicket. If you're watching this and you own or steward a little piece of land, you can learn what invasive species are present on your property and you can remove them. And to the extent that you can, replace them with native plants. You can also get involved with your local land trust. Land trusts all over the state are involved in this effort and some municipalities are as well. And when I do this work, volunteers with loppers are worth their weight in gold. So come volunteer.
I think I care about this so much because I feel like I can actually do something about it. So if I can do that, I'm gonna do that. <laughs>